Red Deer Public Schools acknowledges Treaty 6 territory to the north of the Red Deer River. Treaty 6 territory is the ancestral and traditional territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, Suto, Nakoda Sioux, as well as the Métis. We also acknowledge Treaty 7 territory to the south of the Red Deer River. Treaty 7 territory is the ancestral and traditional territory of the Métis, Blackfoot Confederacy, Kanai, Bikani, and Sisika, as well as the Sutena First Nation and Stony Dakota First Nation. We acknowledge and give thanks to all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. We are grateful for elders and the traditional knowledge keepers who are still with us today and those who have gone before. Recognizing and acknowledging that traditional land is an act of reconciliation and a show of gratitude to those whose territory we reside on. My name is Donna Bishop, and I help out with the grandfather here at the Friendship Center in Red Deer. And so they call me Grandma. So um, this day is about actually little people a long time ago that were Indigenous, but a lot of them didn't come home. So this day is about remembering. Remember? Remembrance Day. That's what I'll use. Remembrance Day. What is Remembrance Day for? Well, this is our Remembrance Day when our children didn't come home from residential school. But it's about wearing an orange t-shirt to support all the little ones that might have not made it home a long, long time ago in history. And that's what you're going to be learning more about is what that orange t-shirt really means. My name is Lyle Kewaitan Richards and uh, I chair the Remembering the Children Society uh, here in Red Deer. I also sit on the Elder Circle with uh, uh, Urban Aboriginal Voices. Uh, it's so nice to be here because Fort Normando is one of the, you know, the, 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 the places where uh, this kind of all started. It's uh, across the river uh, where these students were um, is where the, uh, the whole thing uh, began. I uh, met a fellow named uh, Albert Lightning back in uh, 1987. I was working at the museum at the time as a summer student. And Albert came in and we were on coffee break and he says, oh, there you are. He says, you're the one that's going to find my brother. I said, okay, well, where, where, where is he? And he says, well, he died of the Spanish flu in 1919, going to the Indian residential school here in Red Deer. And uh, um, we don't know where they put him. And so uh, um, I started off looking for one student. When I got to the graveyard, I found four. Uh, Michael Daw gave me a list of all the kids that were at the school. And uh, once I became aware of the, uh, of the cemetery, I ended up finding them all. 
And at that time we thought it was 45 and now we believe it's like 70. And so I think, so it, it speaks to, you know, what you were saying about what do the kids take away from this? What do the, you know, people, anybody take away from this? And it's sort of like saying, okay, that, that was our past. You know, we were sitting over there talking about, you know, the past and Albert and his brother and so on like this. But what, we, what is hard is to keep people remembering and to keep that, keep that story alive so that people uh, uh, know what happened so that we don't have to repeat anything like that. You, uh, none of you are lost. You're all here, you know, there, you know, it's a, and none of you are laying in the graveyards up on the hill. You have, you know, you are wanted. You're, uh, people are, uh, uh, care about you. And, um, nobody's trying to change you. That's, that's really important. My name is Brian St. Germain and I'm Cree from Red Deer, Alberta. I'm a former teacher with Red Deer Public School District. I'm also a member of the Remembering the Children's Society. I was born and raised in Red Deer and grew up just down the hill from this spot. We are located on Treaty 7 and very near Treaty 6 territory. Today, we are at the Red Deer City Cemetery where four students from the Red Deer Indian Industrial School were buried in 1918. These four students died as a result of the Spanish flu. Jane Baptiste, 13 years old, Sarah Suse, 13 years old, Georgina House, 14 years old, David Lightning, 14 years old. They were buried here instead of the cemetery near the school because at the time the school was suffering from an outbreak of diseases and everyone was so sick that there was no one physically able to help dig the graves. And as a result, the undertaker from Red Deer was called to arrange the burial of the young students in Red Deer. In 2011, Remembering the Children's Society was formed to preserve the history and legacy of the Red Deer Indian Industrial School Cemetery and to ensure that the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action are enacted, specifically in regards to missing children and burial information. On September 28, 2017, a ceremony hosted by Remembering the Children's Society and as an act of reconciliation was held at the Red Deer Cemetery to unveil a special memorial marker at the grave sites of the four Red Deer Indian Industrial School students buried here. Chief Wilton Littlechild spoke at the memorial and he stated, in our traditional way, there is a belief that if you don't do ceremony, the child's spirit wanders around. When the children died over a hundred years ago, no traditional ceremony was done for them. They had to wait 100 years for the pipe ceremony in 2017 to free their spirits. The marker stands as a sad reminder of the young lives lost as a result of the legacy of residential schools. I would encourage everyone to read and respond to the 94 TRC calls to action. As TRC Commissioner Chief Littlechild has said, we have a daily call to action that ignites our spirits to work together towards a new and more inclusive and better Canada. You now have a responsibility to work towards true reconciliation, to heal and repair the damaged relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians. The past is always present until it is resolved. The path forward is in your heart. Hi, hi. We wanted to have the teepees at two locations in Red Deer. We wanted one on the north side of the river in traditional Neyau territory and another one on the south side of the river in traditional Blackfoot territory. We thought it would be important for students from all across the district and different schools to be able to visit these locations where the teepees are at and to be able to have educational days there to come enjoy the teepee for sitting outside, listening to a story from their teacher, inviting in an elder to come spend some time in the teepee with them, sharing teachings and sharing knowledge and sharing their stories. It's important to share the different teachings for each teepee from different nations that not all nations have the same teachings. It's important for the students and the staff to learn about the care of the teepee, how to look after the poles, how to put them up themselves and how to take them down. As well when the teepees are up there's so much learning that can be done in the in the teepee from reading a book with a teacher to inviting an elder in to share their stories. It's important for truth and reconciliation. The teepees are a symbol of truth and reconciliation for when people see them they think about 
the history of the land that we're on and our future. And this will always be traditional land for the first peoples that have been here for thousands and thousands of years. The teepees that we have raised in Red Deer Public are one of many resources that the teachers in Red Deer Public Schools use to share knowledge and teachings, worldview and perspective and history with students. We've had the privilege of, uh, as mentioned earlier, talking to various knowledge keepers and elders that have taken us along a journey that help us to uh, bring to the forefront truth and reconciliation. And in that spirit, uh, the creation of many resources uh, we've been able to do. Uh, we've been able to come across many contacts of people that have helped us understand how to deliver this in the classroom and in the curriculum and the programs of studies for all grade levels. There's many opportunities to do that. And so we have been able to develop various uh, uh, activities, uh, coming into schools as well and do many different presentations uh, that help teach about truth and reconciliation. A while back, some of the research and reading that I, I did, and I heard an individual talk about how, as you understand something, the road to, to reconciliation uh, really begins with baby steps and each one of us are at a different place. And to understand the past and to know that what happened happened is to, to know the truth about those, uh, those incidents that have taken place uh, when it comes to understanding uh, residential schools. And so when you understand and know just a little bit more, then you've taken a step towards truth and reconciliation. Last year, Red Deer Public Schools and the Red Deer Native Friendship Society partnered together to host a design contest for the Orange Shirt Day for National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. We asked students from Red Deer Public Schools to create their own design that they would enter in the contest. We had over 100 entries from students from grade one all the way up to grade 12. 2022 is the decade of Indigenous languages, and that is where we chose the theme for this year's logo design contest. The staff at Red Deer Native Friendship Society all got to see the designs and they got to choose their favorites. And from that, the winners were chosen. So the third prize went to Alexis Nadia Ribeiro, grade four student at Mount View School. And the second prize winner went to Gabby Charlie, a grade 11 student at Lindsay Thurber. And the winner of the first prize is Hallie Thiessen, who last year when she entered was a grade five student at Fairview School. This year, she's in grade six at Central Middle School. We'd like to say thank you to all of the students who entered their designs in the contest. There's a lot of hard work and we have many gifted students throughout Red Deer Public. It is a jingle dress dancer and it represents healing. It's like a dancer that dances with jingles on their dress and then they start dancing to some traditional music and then they start praying. It just rep represents that everybody cares about all the children who were in the residential schools. It teaches us how to not be racist to other, other people who were who are in different colors, skin colors, or who their identity is. When they buried the children, what they didn't know, it, they were lovingly embraced by the land. Held and cradled in a mother's heart, the trees wept for them with the wind. They sang morning songs their mothers didn't know to sing, bending branches to touch the earth around them. Creator cried for them, the tears falling like rain. Mother Earth held them until they could be found. Now our voices sing the morning songs. With the trees, the wind, light, sacred fire, ensure they're never forgotten as we sing justice. <laughs> 